Where's the promo? No promo. <laughs> <laughs> no promo shown. Uh, my screen's black, Daniel. What's going on? Come on, Daniel. Oh, there we are. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, we got that delay over here on our end. What is up, look how everybody? Good you look on screen, dude. Yeah, I know, that. right? Look at that. Am I on vacation or what? What's up with this shirt? Dude, I almost wore <laughs> <I'm> like <that laughs> What's up, everybody? I almost wore a uh, flower print today. We would have been twinners. Oh, I know, right? And it was going to be short sleeve, too. So, but hey, we're good. I, I went solids. We yeah. should probably coordinate. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Just in case. Like, <laughs> Same outfit. <laughs> like, hey, what are you wearing? <laughs> wear my Halloween costume next that's time. When we do the live events, that's what me and George always do. Because we have, he dresses like me. Yeah. Yeah. So he's taking on my. <laughs> he's my, taking on your style? My style. <laughs> and so, because all he had was a suit and tie before. So he's taking on my style. And uh, so he's always like, hey, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Oh, he so he can me. wear the same thing. We have some of the, what, so he cannot wear the same thing as we, uh, at that's the live funny. events. What's up, guys? Fernando Pitti here with ESS Everest Coaching. And I am here with Alma Merrill. Alma, how you doing, bro? Oh, man. The craziest, craziest day today. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> live audience. Uh, craziest day today. I had this call and this lady uh, that, that we helped them sell their house. And uh, they were moving. And I get this call from the other agent. And she's like, hey, your client's not out yet. I'm like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, they're, they're not even close to being out. They got like truckloads left. I'm all, no, no, no. They're going to be out at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And she goes, no, no, there's no way. She's oh, like, wow. there's no way unless they work all night with a group of like 20 people, they're not out in the morning. I'm like, are you kidding? And she goes, no, I drove by and I checked it out. I'm like, holy crap. So I drove by there. there everything's closed down. It's dark in the house. The truck's in the driveway. I'm thinking, all right, maybe, the, maybe she doesn't, maybe she's not, maybe she doesn't No, It's not true. You know, no. I don't know. What did she, I don't know. So then I hit up the client and I'm like, hey, do you guys need help getting stuff out? And, and she's like, yeah, big time. Like, no, no, no. She just said, my client just says, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So I get a crew. We get this crew over there this morning. This morning? Dude, oh, wow. We loaded a 26 foot truck this morning. Wow. Like, what time did you start? With yours truly. And I've never done this before in my entire career. And just, just for the record, I don't recommend doing this, but they are two days past what they thought they were going to be out. And today is their last day to be able to get out. Yeah. They were supposed to be out by today at like 5 p.m. or something like that. There was no way this was happening. Wow. So we got a whole crew of people and that other agent, bless her freaking soul, like she helped like out paid too. a bunch of money and came over and like helped coordinate it. And wow. we're like, cause her clients need to get in and my clients yeah. need to get out. And they're, they were unable to get all the resources they needed to move out. And they just kind of neglected to tell us. Procrastinators. <laughs> Procrastinators. So like, Jeez. Uh, love them to death. They just didn't have the right resources. So we, we freaking hooked it up over there and both agents came together and made the magic happen and they'll be out of there today. So nice. Nice. Yeah. So, th so the agent found out from like the final walkthrough or what? Yeah. Well, yeah, they did the final walkthrough and then they're like, there's no way they're going to be out by uh, tomorrow. Like we just did our final walkthrough and we're, we're like signing today and there's just no way. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they'll be out. They said they're going to have a whole group of people. So what ended up happening is a husband hires like six guys. They come over and the wife's like, no, 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 no. We're not paying that much. It's 40 bucks an hour per head, you know? Oh, wow. And they're like, no, no, no. We're not paying that much. Like, go away. So all the guys leave. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. And the husband's no like, no, we plan. need it. We need it. No contingency plan, oh, dude. The joys of real estate. Yeah, so we made it happen today. It was well, great. today, uh, hopefully we're going to get some uh, some traction today because I know that we've been on Real Estate Mastermind uh trying to promote this thing, which is kind of difficult on there because they don't really let you advertise or put any right. links or, or anything. Yeah, it's been hard. It's been interesting just trying to find the right resources to help people out, you know, for a free service. Of course, this is it, it, it's beneficial to us because we yeah. get viewership for our coaching stuff and eventually want to convert people into coaching. But the nice thing about that is we're able to offer a tremendous amount of value in free content by doing live calls yeah. to kind of show, Hey, look, this is what we're about. This is what we do. This is how we do it. And I think it adds a tremendous amount of value. Um, so obviously at some point we are going to make money on it, but yeah. it, it just, it's just a matter of, Hey, let's contribute first. It's the same thing when you're listing a property, yep. you know, you want to contribute first, add tremendous amount of value and then count your money when it's all over. Yep. Yep. Hey Daniel. So you said the promo wasn't in there. Oh, very nice. Okay. Well, just so everybody knows, we have an event coming up April 26th, 27th, and 28th, right? Yep. Yeah. 
And this is the Elevate Elevate event. event. Yep. This Elevate is going to be very instructional. Um, it's going to feel a lot more like a classroom than probably our climb event. When we did climb, climb is more of a personal development um, where you're dealing with your heart, your mind, your soul, those types of things. Like primarily we, we're working on what's going on inside here and what's going on inside here. And so the Elevate events though are a lot more frequent than the climb events. The Elevate events are, um, you know, basically quarterly and the Elevate events will work on really kind of the nitty gritty details of, of how to do everything. Okay. You know, how skill many, set. yeah, it's all skill discipline. set, skill base. Yeah. Mindset, skills, discipline. Nice. And so we do work a little bit on the mind, but it's, it's mindset, skills, discipline. So we'll work a lot more on skills. We'll work a lot more on your disciplines. Um, things that you're doing to cause your business to be successful kind of without your, your, you know, your input every single day. That type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So. Well, it's going to be good. Cause you're going to be doing some live calling <clears throat> yeah, in we front do that. of everybody. We do that too in front of everybody, which is a freaking blast. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, if you it's, haven't, it's, it's funny because people are, are, are so nervous to call alone in their office and then you're over there calling in front of two or 300 people. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And you actually set an appointments right there. So it's pr pr pretty awesome. You know, maybe I'm just messed up in the head, but it's easier for me to call in front of people than it is alone in my office. So because, that accountability. Well, the thing is, is, and, and I think a lot of people can relate to this. When you get in your head, you're dead. Everything stops dead in the water if you're in your head and it's easier to get in your head when you're alone. And so when you're calling people, I always, I always challenge people when you're calling people, bring other people in with you, bring other agents in the room with you and call together or have them watch you or coach them or whatever. But it brings a certain level of accountability. It makes it a little bit easier when you're with people yeah. than without. That's why we do our, um, we also do our monthly um, prospecting schools where we have people come in. And for a couple hundred bucks, you can come in for two full days and just prospect, prospect, prospect with me and Judy Forden and our, our uh, coaching team. And you can learn all the scripts and the dialogues and how to do it and what to say and all those things. And then have all your questions answered, which is cool. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's like, it's the coolest thing because you're there, you're live, you're making calls for your area and we're, we're instructing you and helping you through the process. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. But then your accountability side, cause you got, yeah. you know, 15, 17 other people in the room with you in each room. Just watching. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's pretty cool. It's good to see. And it is the, uh, I mean, that's the foundation of, you know, a lot of agents business and especially the ones who are just starting when they don't have a lot of SOI or people who know who they are yet. You know, they yeah. got a call to get business. Um, and I really love how we're doing this here. We can show them how to do this. You know, it's yeah. extremely valuable for everybody. And also for those who attend the prospecting school. Yeah. You know? It's, you know, it's tough when you start out because you're like, I don't, I don't. And, and especially let's say you move to a new area and then you're like, I want to be a real estate agent in this area. You just don't have a lot of friends. Like that's kind of how it was for me when I moved to Utah. Like I grew up in Southern California. All my network was in California. I just had a couple of siblings in Utah. And so for me, it was like, dude, I don't, I don't have an SOI or a COI. Yeah. I don't have a group of people that trust me to be their agent and I'm brand new. How do I develop this? And so the for sale by owner and expired calls were critical for me to build my business. I mean, that's where 99% of my business call, comes from now is that I just used to make all these call, I still do make all these calls. And if you're not developing your business guys, if you're not doing that um, business acquisition, you're not creating new clientele constantly you're not doing business. You need to be doing that constantly. New clients, even if you have like this, this flush of, you know, just plethora waterfall, yeah. un unending river of SOI clients coming in and giving you business, you should still be creating new clientele through, uh, for sale by owners or expired. So yep. Yep. they need you. <laughs> well, I'm excited. I believe your phone is already connected. Is it? We should do like a so. phone. See, yep. Let's see what we got here. We can start cranking if you guys want. Yeah, let's start cranking. I totally forgot how to use this thing. I don't know how I forgot <laughs> that first. There we go. One. Oh, there's the music. Two. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. There All we right, go. Let me let me connect my cell phone here. So I'm calling from my iPad, and uh, as most of you know, uh, I will. I always have my my listing appointment sheets here. Unknown. Plug in here. All right. Okay. We're connected. So I have my uh, listing appointment sheets. Um, and 
you know, a lot of times, you know, I do these mostly um, electronically on my iPad, but since we're since I'm dialing from my iPad today, uh, I just have them printed out here. I also have my uh, my script book next to me, so I can always refer to the script when I need to, even though the even though some of these scripts I wrote and helped and co-wrote, um, you still want to have them next to you yeah. because even though I have them like in my mind, sometimes I even get like just sidetracked and then I'm like, okay, I just need to get back to where I was at. And so I always have that open and next to me. And then I always have just a notepad as well, just right next to me. So I can make notes and that type of thing. So, Oh, something happened. What happened? I think it disconnected. It did disconnect. It did disconnect. Let's try well, it. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. Here's what I say. I think, you know what? I think last time we we're a little, uh, we, we, we shot for the moon and we missed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got one appointment. We did get yeah. one appointment. We we're, do an appointment. Let's, used, let's, uh, let's, do, let's do four, four for four. We're used to doing four appointments or three appointments or whatever per calling day, and we got yeah. one. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I want to see. Let's get some music going. Let me refresh this Go list ahead. real quick. Yeah. And then, it, it, while you guys are on here, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and ask any questions. Um. We love to answer questions on the show. And then in between kind of some calls, we'll talk a little bit about the calls and the appointments and those types of things. And then if you guys have any um, questions or whatever, feel free just to, to post them up or send us a, a message and we'll respond to you here. All right, let me load this dialer back up since it, I think it disconnected on us because I didn't start calling quick. All right, here we go. I couldn't believe how many people I've had. I've had hundreds of people hit me up, say, hey. Unknown caller. They're like, I want to be a part of this or I want to watch this. Okay, cool. Get my audio up. Okay, sweet. Let's dial, baby. We're All dialing. Right, let's go. Hello, this is Rhonda Collister. I'm sorry, I missed your call. All right, so I have this on a dialer. It's dialing three lines at a time, and uh, it's leaving automatic messages for me that I pre-recorded. Please leave your message for... Your call has been forwarded to an fast. automatic voice message. Yeah, they're going quick to me. Hopefully there's no... Hey, hi, I was calling about... Uh, you had a, a property for sale here in Bluffdale? Yep. And you... you are you selling that for sale by owner? Is that right? Yep, correct. Okay. My name's Al. I'm with uh, Century 21. <laughs> I'm sure you've had just a ton of agents okay. calling you trying to list your home, right? Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> well, fortunately, purpose for my call, we just sold a couple other properties not far from you there. So I was just calling to get some info about this one. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. So tell me a little bit about it. How many bedrooms does it have? So it has uh, four bedrooms. All of them are upstairs. Um, two full baths, one half. Okay, so two um, two full, one half. The yep, basement's unfinished. Okay. Okay. Um, it's in a cul-de-sac. There's a third car. The third car has a ten by ten garage door. Oh, nice. Um, about twenty eight feet long. There's an RV pad that's about thirty two feet long. Okay. Backyard, fully fenced, fully landscaped, covered patio is about, I think it's 12 by 20. Okay. Covered. And then there's a fire pit out there that's all concrete. You said 12 by 20 um, on the, on the patio? Yep. Okay. And a fire pit? Yep. Yep, and a fire pit that's all concrete. Beautiful. Okay. Is it a Rambler? Um, no, two story. Two story, okay. Uh, is a master yep. on the main floor? Nope, it's all upstairs. Okay, cool, great. What year is the house? It was built in 2017. Okay, cool. Who was the builder on it? Candlelight Homes. Oh, good. Okay, cool. How have been you it turned into Lenar? <laughs> how How have you liked it? Loved it. I actually worked for Candlelight when I built the house. Oh, did you really? Cool. So this was your kind of uh -huh. your personal home that you had built with when you were with them. Exactly. Yep. So I got the great deal on it. Um, we picked it because it's in the cul-de-sac. It's a very private little area. Uh, it's not one of those main roads. 
Uh, we love the area. Um, we're just moving out of state. Oh, are you? Where are you heading? Tennessee. Nice. That's cool. I lived out in Tennessee for a summer, just doing summer sales back in the day. I loved it out there. Where at? Uh, Chattanooga. Okay. So we're looking at the Nashville area. So you guys are just a couple hours away. Yeah. To the, yeah, you're out, um, West side, right? Nashville. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What takes you to Nashville? That's pretty cool. Just change. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. (laughs) That's all. Yeah. Well, you got plenty of people moving in. Making a big change. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got plenty yeah. of well, both places. Yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. Cool. Okay. And then what are you asking for the house? Um, so we haven't listed it at seven eighty and that's my net thinking that we were doing it for sale by owner. Okay. So coming with an agent, I'd have to cover the commission on that side. So it'd right. probably be more around like eight ten, eight fifteen. Okay. And tell me what was your total square footage? I think it's like twenty six sixty. Twenty six sixty, so almost, almost three thousand, or almost. Uh, that's finished. Oh, that's finished. Okay, so do you know what the basement is as well? It's another thousand square feet. Okay, so you're about thirty six hundred. Yep. Okay, cool. That and then cool. there's two systems. So I made sure when I built the built the house that they actually had two systems instead of just the one. So there's one on the main, and there's one upstairs. Um, so the one upstairs just runs upstairs. The main level will actually run the basement and the main level once the ducts will open up to the basement. And that's the AC and, or the Havoc system? Correct, yep. Okay. How big they is your lot? They both have on them as well. So, um, it's like 0.17 of an acre. 1.7, okay, sweet. And you said you have yeah. humidifiers on those as well? Yeah, um, each heater, each H V C unit has humidifier. Cool. That's something you won't need in Tennessee. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and then there's also um, a 50 gallon water heater that has a soft water system already hooked up. Nice. Dude, beautiful. Soft water. Okay, cool. Yeah, kind sounds- of a cold storage. That sounds really nice. How did you come up with your price? Um, so I'm actually a, a loan officer, so I know what the the estimated value of the house was. Oh, good. And so ABM is ABM is showing about um, seven eighty five. Okay. So the reason I ask, I just I just sold a property that's actually really similar to this, um, bigger lot, which obviously adds a lot in this area, but. It was over in um, Riverton. Mm-hmm. We just closed on it. It was nine hundred, and but the square footage was basically the oh same. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. they have a finished basement? Uh, it was finished. Yeah. So just accounting for those two things, which, as so you know, really- isn't a ton of difference, but yeah. No, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. Jeez. I know. I was like, and, see, I, and I was hoping when we listed, you know, at the the seven eighty, I was hoping that we would, you know get some more bids at the 800 level. Yeah. But, you know, just seeing what the market actually did and what, what foot traffic is, because the neighbor right behind me, she is a realtor, and she she told me, she's like, hey, I just want to get some foot traffic through there, so I'm going to kind of host an open house for you. And I said, yeah, but I'm not going to contract with you. Right. Like, no, no, I just want foot traffic through there. And she just wants to gather so buyer leads. An open house. Exactly. That's yep. all it was. And I was like, well, that's fine. I mean, you're all, okay. I know who your lender's going to be. <laughs> <open house. laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I told her, so she's doing the open house from 11 to 2 um, this Saturday. Oh, cool. That's perfect. Um, let me, have you had any hits on it or offers at, at the 780? Uh, yeah. So we did have one, um, but it was with an agent, so it was not what we were wanting. Okay. Um, and then we have a couple that looked at it last night, and then they're going back today to look at it at two with their kids. So I'm assuming they're probably going to put something together today or tomorrow. Well, you know, it's so funny. Like this one I listed at 900, I was like, okay, it is a little bit of a shot in the dark. But here's the thing. The, a lot of the, well, you know as well as I do, when an, when an appraiser appraises a property or when somebody does, even when an agent does comps right. on a property, 
they're looking at the past comparables. Yeah. And so when I, when I comp out a property, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. And when I comp out a property right now in a market yeah. like this, um, I always look at what I've seen happen and what I think is going to happen before I price a home as well. So yeah. this one, you know, yeah. honestly, it was a hundred grand higher than what it comped at. It was. And the agent okay. actually who brought the buyer, she calls me up before she, before they even submit the offer. She, and I've known her for years. Right. And before I submit the offer, mm -hmm. before she submits the offer, she's like, Alma, come on. She's like, honestly, why did, why are you pricing the home right here? It, there's nothing that comps like that in this area. And I said, yep. I can appreciate that. However, the market will absorb this home. This home will sell at this price. And she's like, what makes you think that, you know, yep. she's trying to, She's trying to negotiate for her buyers and I'm just like uh -huh. slamming her with some logic. I'm like, well, what well, makes me think that? Because I've seen time and time again, hundred grand over offer or hundred grand over asking, um, waiving yep. appraisal, uh, you know, t h tremendous amounts of, int of, uh, of earnest money. And I just said, look, the home is going to sell. So I said, I, I can appreciate the fact that the comps don't come in, but the home is going to sell. And she was the one that sent the offer and they were a hundred dollars above asking. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So she, yeah, see, and I've done like that. Yeah, I've done like the two, three, five year projections on this. Uh -huh. um, because it's right next to the prison. So it's just out there in that area and the new community. Yeah. Um, and the prison is going. So it's yeah. projecting that in like by year three, it's supposed to be uh, about 150 to 200,000 more. Yeah, I agree with that. Maybe even more than that because. I think people yeah. are, are misunderstanding. It's by year five, one point one. There you go. Yep, that makes sense. So, well, cool, man. I tell, what was your name? I didn't get your name. Vance. V a n c e. V a n c e. Okay, Vance. Sweet man. Yeah, my name's Alma. Well, let's do. I mean, let me ask you this. I don't know if this will work for you or not. I may not. I mean, you're. This isn't your first rodeo. You know, real estate inside and out. Um. But let me ask you this. If we could figure out a way that, you know, by working together, we could get the property sold by listing it, marketing it correctly. And we could do for you what we did for this other couple, net you a ton more money, you know, sell it in the next, you know, 10 to 12 days or whatever it is. I mean, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? I would. I mean, you have, you have to be able to tell me that that's going to be more yeah. in the upper eight at that point. Yeah. Well, let's, let's at least look at it. It, you know, looking at the numbers that I've seen, it makes sense. Um, I would just have to do a little bit more research. I'll be candid with you though. If I, if I do the research and it doesn't yeah. make sense, you know, you'll know as well as I will, whether or not it would make sense for us to work together. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's, fair. let's do this. What are you going to be at the open house on Saturday? I will not be. You won't? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to, let's see here. The next time I'll be right over by you on Monday evening. Do you care if I pop in then? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. here. And then what I'll do. So, um, would like five or six work for you? Actually, let's do, if, if you're open at six, that would be better. I have a, I have a four o'clock. Six for sure. Okay. So let's do six. And then when I come out, I mean, you know, my intention is to list the home if we can make the numbers work. Um, but, but between now and then I'll do a little more research. If it doesn't work, I'll call you that day and just say, Hey, that's not going to work. But if it does look like it's going to work, I'll still Perfect. confirm with you. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll plan on okay. seeing you at six and hopefully we can list this sucker and get you another, who cares how much more, but a lot more than this, I think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me know. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Vance. Good talking to you. What's your last name, by the way? All right. Thanks so much. Green. Green. Okay, cool. Sweet, man. Sounds good. I'll see you on um, Monday at 6 p.m. Perfect. Okay, Thank you so much. Sweet. I appreciate you, it. you got it. Talk to you then. Okay, bye. Done. <laughs> oh, Appointment set. So we're, only 12, we're only 12 minutes in, baby. So easy. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I was thinking if he said, yeah, I'm going to be at the uh, open house. If you went in there and got the ERS signed in front of the other agent, <laughs> Dude, that is not, that would not be the craziest thing that I've done in front of other agents. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, and, and I wouldn't I, I wouldn't put it past you. I know I know you're capable of doing that. It's pretty funny. Dude, what, what, you know what? You know what freaking made me feel brazen was I had an agent kind of do that to me one time. 
mm. one of the coolest agents ever, right? He's not like he he's like he's a total veteran, but what happened was his name's his name's uh, Matthew Flanders, right? He's such a stud and he would not care if I told this story. It was awesome. So I go to this listing appointment and knock, knock, knock. And the, the owner opens the door and, uh, <laughs> and they're like, Oh, I'm sorry. We're still with another agent. Cause he was running over on his appointment yeah. for, for his listing. Right. And Matthew, I see his head poke around the corner. He goes, Oh, is that Alma? Alma, come on up, man. Have a seat. And I'm like, Dude, I could look at this one of two ways, right? This was when me and Matt were oh, like... Oh, he was about to put you through school, huh? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I was newer. I was probably like three years in the biz. So I was still brand new, green behind the ears, all this. And he goes, come on up, man. Come on up. I know Alma. Alma's great. Dude, so he he lets me... I'm like, okay. For, so something clicked in me. I went from, from the mode of like I'm competing for this listing yeah. to I want to go to school. Yeah. I'm going to learn from this guy because he's a freaking pro, right? So I'm like, hell yeah, dude, I'm in. So I walk, you know, I walk upstairs and we sit down and it was one of these condos that has the garage underneath the house, you know? So I walk up the stairs, we sit down and we, I just sit there and I'm, I'm like, Matt, do you care? I'm right in front of the, the clients. I could care less. right? Like, <laughs> dude, do you care if I take notes? And he's like, not at all, my friend, go for it. So I just sit there, dude. And I filled up an entire sheet of paper just taking notes on yeah. what he did, how he did it, the way he set, the way he talked with people, the way they, he took their responses. It was seriously one of the best things I had ever learned. Yeah. The value in there, I bet was more than the, the listing would have been worth, oh, you know, for sure, yeah. dude, long-term yeah. for sure. Like, I mean, it was probably a $150,000 condo at that time. Now that same condo is like 400. Oh yeah, know? of course. But it was like, it was, it was the coolest thing. And after I was done, we walked out together and I'm like, dude, Matt, Thank you, man. That was so cool of you to invite me in and be a part of that. And Did I'm you get like, a listing? I got, he got it. Yeah. yeah, he got it. I watched him sit there and sign this freaking thing right there in front of me. But I was like, dude, this is one of the cool, it wasn't yeah. with my company or anything. He was just the coolest dude. And uh, he, where he and I are still just dear friends today. And uh, he and his, his partner, Drew Armstrong. And, and I, I learned so much from that moment. And so guys, it may, you know, you're going to come across stuff that is non-conventional. Yeah. It's going to be weird. Dude, go with it. Life happens for you. Okay. Life happens for you, not to you. So when you see something like that, take it as an opportunity of growth and contribution. Let him contribute to you. Let you grow. We can always learn something from these people. Then, so I replay, I repaid the flight, the favor one time. <laughs> There's this other agent, same thing. He knocks on the door and I know this agent, right? His name's Brian. He's such a cool dude. And, uh, now this guy now, okay, he, back then he and I were competing, right? Now this guy is, he does twice at least the business that I do, mm. at least. I mean, he's just a dominator down in uh, Southern Utah. I mean, this guy, he commissioned, he took like $3.6 million in commissions last year. Holy cow. In Utah, in uh, St. George, Holy which cow. if anybody knows St. George, it's actually a pretty small geographical area, but it's boomed like crazy. It's like the new like Vegas Valley, you wow. know? And so, yeah, he took, he made like three, six last year, just selling, doing for sell by owners every morning, just like this. Jeez. Yeah, this works, yeah. man. It's that consistency. You know, yeah. I had the opportunity to actually visit a brokerage a uh, week and a half ago uh, down South. And uh, I got to meet um, one of the, well, actually the, 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 the most successful agent in the company. And uh, I saw his whole setup, what he did and how he ran his business. And he was no different than, you know, somebody like you who just calls and dials. The, yeah. the, the one thing that he did different than a lot of agents was he was so consistent and so right. disciplined where he would dial every single morning without any interruption. He wouldn't take an appointment during that time. It was religious for him. Yep. And uh, sometimes that's the difference. That is the know? difference because consistency is our greatest tool. Yeah. We always say that consistency is your greatest tool consistency what's your greatest tool what is the greatest tool that you have in your entire quiver all of the knowledge you have everything you have what's the greatest tool it's consistency <laughs> that deserves a round of applause and you know while you're filling that out yeah. and setting up your appointment uh -huh. we have some uh new viewers here on the channel jeanette leo what's up jeanette how you what's doing up, jeanette <laughs> And I hope I don't butcher this. Is it liney, leany, lean, line? 
Uh-oh. Leanne? Leanne. <laughs> I think you're wrong too, Daniel. I don't know. Either way, uh, Miss or Mrs. Justice, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm happy that uh, we're here to provide value for you guys. And you know what we're going to do right now? If you guys are still watching uh, right now, if you guys want to, um, Jeanette, you know what you're <clears throat> there. Jeanette, do, do you want to spin the wheel? Let's, yeah, uh, let's, let's spin have, the wheel for Let's Jeanette. have Jeanette spin the wheel. Daniel, uh, let's get uh, let's get you up here to spin the wheel. Get, Jeanette, give, give us like, uh, Jeanette, give us like two seconds and we're going to... Set this up and Go camera, we'll camera to the wheel to spin the wheel. Um, oh, okay, close. You said close. <laughs> what? How, how close was I? Is it La <laughs> Leanne? Lean? <laughs> I'm butchering this one. I'm so sorry, but you know what? We'll give you guys both a chance. Uh, Jeanette, give us, give us one second. I'm going to pull up these sounds for you guys and then we will. Give you a chance to spin the wheel. So, where are we at here? Three, two, one. Daniel, go ahead and give it a spin. Beautiful, Daniel. <laughs> Adjusting the mountain. What is that? No pride. No pride. Oh, <laughs> what? You know what that actually means? <laughs> All right. I love those sound effects. You know okay. that. You know that no prize is my favorite. Yeah. No, that's slot. a good one. But. Jeanette, are you here? Because there actually is a prize there. It's in studio training live with us. I think she's out desk. of I think she's out of state. I don't know. Yeah. If are you? If you're local, um, hit us up. That's a familiar name. I may have hit, hit her up a little bit. Jeanette, um, are you here? Local. If you're local, you can come in studio and be with us when we do these calls. Oh, she is. She is. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? Go ahead and text Judy. Judy uh, Forden. She's right there. She. Uh, Put her number on there. It's a, uh, wait, is that just, oh, that is Judy's number. Judy, what are you doing with an out-of-state number? All right, 313-815-8389. Get a hold of her, and uh, let's go ahead and get you in here yeah. during our next live, and you can see Alma in action. You can come sit in here, and we can just, do, you can just have a live thing. Those are those are like my favorite, the, the blank ones, because it's like, hey, let's do this instead. Yeah. We don't want to give away nothing. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know what, uh, Daniel? Can you give her one more spin? I want to. I, I want to give her something uh, tangible. So oh, take here we go. All double, right, three, double prizes. Two, let's go with another one. What do you got? Journal. Journal. Sweet. There All right. we go. So you can have your journal, journal with you while you're here. There we go. I like it. I'm not local, she said. Oh, you're not. But local. I am in the chat. LOL. Sorry, okay. I'm in Chicago. Chicago. Oh, nice. Chicago. All right, there we go. Okay, you got a journal. Go ahead and text Judy if you can. She'll but get a hold of you, and we will send you that journal. Here's the other thing. Since you're not local, I will give you one hour of free coaching with me, uh, where I will train you on scripts and dialogue. Huh? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hey, say that was good. Oh yeah, that was great. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so hit me up. Uh, message me, and you and I will set up a time. And then we'll do an hour of coaching of on for sell by owners and expireds. So, all right. Well, you know what? We are going to Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. How did I mess that up? Oh my gosh. Lynn, are you still here? If you're still here, let's go ahead and give you a chance to spin the wheel. Daniel, let's get you back up there one more time and let's, uh, let's give Lynn a chance. Let's give her a chance to spin this. We should have Anna do it. She's cuter than Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's true. Daniel over there. The viewers drop off. All right. Right. <laughs> Three. Well, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go, Lynn. Let's go. Spin the wheel. What do we got here? Journal? Journal. Lynn, where are you located? Where are you at? Are you uh, here in Utah? Let's see. There was a little delay there, but let's just see. How big is? How long is your delay? Who knows? <laughs> changes every day, I feel like. <laughs> it does. Okay, she's in Chicago. So you got a journal. So we'll have a journal sent right over to you. So uh, Judy, you can uh, get a hold of Lynn for us. Judy knows all about Chicago. Oh, yeah. So we got Chicago Judy. and... In Colorado, dude, how awesome is that? We got people out of state watching this thing. Yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, it's good. It's like spreading. That. It's spreading like wildfire. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get back to the dialing and uh, let's see if we can get some more appointments. 
Let's do it. One for one. Oh, yeah. All right, let's resume. Okay, we're on. We're dialing. Hello? Hi. Hey, I was calling about, um, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here in Draper. Did you ever sell that? Yes, uh-huh. Did you? Okay, just no, checking. No, we're not, we're not selling it until April. Oh, 16th. okay, we'll gotcha. we open house at that time. Oh, good. Okay, so you are still selling it then? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. And what's your... Yeah, we're, we're, we're putting in new flooring and painting. Oh, nice. Very nice. So, okay. My name's... Uh, we, can't, we can't show it until... Okay, go ahead. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, no worries. My name's Alma. I'm with Century 21. I'm sure you've had just a ton of agents calling you trying to list it, right? <laughs> uh-huh. I just... I actually live right here in okay. Draper office. I actually am going to be listing... Yeah. I'm going to be listing, with, listing it with a friend. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, but, uh... But, uh... It'll be, uh... I'm just actually communicating with her today. Oh, but, beautiful. But um, I'll, I'll be, uh, so it'll be, but it'll be a, it shows really well the house. It has a beautiful view lot. Okay. Right, it's on the Utah County side of St. Chris. Oh, it is on the so, Utah County uh, side. Beautiful. If you have any be interested, you're welcome to bring them by. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and you okay. said you're, any, you're any doing an... Any about the house or anything? Or? Yeah, can I ask you a few questions about it? So I just have some limited, I just have basically sure. the address. Yeah. Um, how many bedrooms does it have? Uh-huh. It has three bedrooms uh, upstairs, and there's a loft, and it's a Richmond home, and some people have that loft made into a fourth bedroom. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But it's a loft, you know, that looks over the living room. Uh-huh. And then um, the basement is unfinished. Okay. So there's room for more bedrooms downstairs. And it's on a corner lot, and uh, across the street is the view, and nothing can be built there, so it'll always have a beautiful view. Oh, beautiful! Of the lake and uh, and it's you know it's up above the pollution. Yeah, yeah, really nice. Yeah, I've had more people talk to me so about moving anyway. up to Suncrest because of the it's just just above that pollution line, which is nice. Right. Okay, so three bedrooms so and a loft. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. How many sure. how many bathrooms does it have? It has uh, two upstairs and a half bath on the main level. Okay, so two point five. Any any upgrades you've done to the house since you've had it? Um, we're upgrading and putting in uh, vinyl uh, plank flooring in the main level and new carpet that will be oh beautiful and just being put in on the, the first part of April. Okay, and it has it does have stainless steel appliances. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay, and then how how long have you have you had the house? Uh, I think maybe from two, maybe 2010 or 11. Oh, nice. Okay. You're obviously in a great area too. Why are you selling? My daughter is currently, yes. Uh, well, I don't live in the house actually. My daughter is living in the house right now. Oh, okay. And we have two houses up in Santa Cruz and she's actually going to move to the other house. Oh, is she? <laughs> the reason for that <laughs> nice. is that uh, she's a single mother in that house that will be paid for in 10 years. So it would be really nice for her. Oh, yeah. That's great. She really does actually want to leave this house because she loves the view, but uh, it would just be good for her situation. Gotcha. Okay. And I myself am almost 80, and I decided I'd like to have some liquid assets for the next 10 years. <laughs> that's probably a good idea. So yeah. That's really why I'm selling it. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. And then so we have several properties, and uh, but uh, I want this one that I decided to sell. Okay. And then what about the yard? I know some of the yards up there, some of them are kind of hilly, but what, what's your configuration there on your yard? It, it's pretty, pretty flat. Okay. It goes on the, the side that's toward the view. Uh-huh. There's a, a little bit, it slants down, you know, but, but from flat down to uh, this is, okay. you know, the sidewalk is curved. Okay. Oh, timber. Bro- back, okay. I've, been on your, flat. I've actually been on your street, I think. There's a guy that has a, um, yeah, a probably so. like a Volkswagen bus that that lives kind of not far from you there. Uh-huh. I just saw him driving around. Fielding Lane is the one that actually takes the houses back up to the view. Oh, okay. And uh, the other house I have is on Brookings, just right above that street that I thought I was going to move into. Okay, gotcha. And this one's it's on It's a real nice neighborhood. Timberbrook, right? They call it Maple Hollow. Tim, Tim, did I say Timberbrook? Yeah. Timberbrook. 
Yeah, okay. Okay. Maple Hollow. Okay, perfect. And then it should show really really well because it's going to be all, you know, everything new in it. Okay. Is she out of it now? Is she is it vacant currently? No, no, she's not. Okay. And she teaches school, so I really can't show it in be, in CSF Spring Break to get things picked out. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so I'm not showing it until the 16th. Okay. And uh and I'm not going to you know, put a lockbox on it because uh, she's actually moving into the other house not until June 1st. Okay. But the house will be pretty much cleared out before then. Yeah, that timing should work out just right. The show. Yeah. And what are you uh, currently asking for it? Uh, I just listed it at the Zillow price was 633 but now the Zillow price has gone up to 638 yeah, that was kind of why I was asking you the other so, the other right. properties that I've sold up there recently that are similar square footage wise because you're about three thousand square feet, is that right? Uh huh. I think twenty nine, but that includes the unfinished basement. Okay, so the other ones that I've seen up there, um, that yeah, there's another one around the corner that's selling listed for seven nineteen. I think that's in the one for sale. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a bit bit unfinished. I almost haven't seen so I'm, I'm almost anything up there less than, to, to than that seven offers. price point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it'll be a good price for somebody. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. I, I don't know if this will work for you or not. I know you kind of have another agent in mind that you're wanting to work with, but if, uh, if we could figure out a way that by working together on it, by listing it and using kind of the techniques that we use, because we, we just sold another house, um, and they were thinking they were going to get seven or seven forty five for it, and we ended up selling it for for mm-hmm. nine hundred. Um, and so we're seeing that a lot of people are leaving huge chunks of money on the table, and they they actually got their price initially from a Zillow's estimate as well. Um, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, if well, I think that we'll probably get higher offers. You know, when we get people coming in, so we'll accept higher offers. Certainly. Okay, but I'm already listing it with my friend, so. Gotcha. Have you, have you already daughter. signed with that other so, agent yet? I'm signing today. <laughs> oh, are you really? And and I really want to, yeah, I really want to work with her. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll really adjust the price if we, you know, get a lot of interest. Well, let's, but, I mean, uh, if you're, if you're at least open to exploring it, there was another one I just sold in Pleasant Grove too. I got him 200000 above what? he anticipated on it, what Zillow uh-huh. said. Well, I'm very willing for a realtor to bring in and pay a commission for you to bring in, to bring in a buyer. Oh, perfect. So, uh, for your, your rough and check. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm very willing to, yeah. to, you know, have other realtors bring in people. So yeah. And I guess I'm, uh, I'm really just happy to have you sell for whatever price you can get. I'm really just kind of looking. But more. I, I'm going to list it with my friends. So, okay. And, and, and honestly, that's the best thing to do. If you have somebody that you know and that you trust and you know, that you want to work for you, um, what we've done mm-hmm. is we've we've put right. together kind she's gonna, of she's going to do a cost analysis for me. She hasn't. She's going to do do some research for me. But okay. I just talked to her today. So beautiful. I would do. So we may change the, the prices. We missed it. I mean, if you're, I don't have any high so, pressure sales pitch or anything. I w- if you're open to it, at least exploring the option of of you know, it's kind of like when you go to the doctor, you want a second opinion. If you're open to at least looking at a second uh-huh. opinion, um, we've we've been able to just. And being candid, I, I just don't trust other agents' opinions because they, over and over again, we've been able to sell uh-huh. houses just tremendously higher because we we sell about one out of every three homes across the Wasatch Front here. And so, if you're at least open to well, you're, it, for your advantage, if you bring something with a high offer, they'll get the house. So. Exactly. Yeah, and well, uh, and the best yeah, way to do that, the best way to do that to is it. to have it listed correctly. You know, that's how you get those higher offers. Uh-huh. And right. so. Yeah, she's going to do a cost analysis for me. We haven't done that yet, so yeah, she'll do that, and then we're going to get it listed by the middle of the month. So okay, are it's you very well could go up in the, our listing price? Now, are you open to exploring the other options? So I'm really not going to change uh, who I list it with. Are you open to exploring it and just looking at the options of what we do to market properties differently? Not, and, not, not, re- not really. I'm not? Okay. I'm already doing what I'm doing, but I, I'll be. Ha- but I'm really happy to have you bring someone in to buy it if you'd like. Beautiful. To. Thanks so much. I appreciate so, your time today. And tell me, what was your name? Uh-huh. Rhonda, Rhonda Corbett. Okay, Rhonda. Awesome. Great chatting with you. Thanks so much for your time. So we'll Rhonda. be listing about on the multiple listing about the middle of the middle of April. You can watch for it. Middle of April. Okay. So, and you, is it anyway, just is it just cuz you're waiting for uh-huh. your daughter to get to be out of it? 
well, she's not even going to be out of it by then. We're just, we have to clear out rooms and things. And she's, she teaches school. She's under a lot of pressure. Okay. And spring break has come up so she can get things organized during that time. And we're getting new flooring put in next week. And she has spring break to get things cleaned up. And then uh, we put it in the carpet that is scheduled for the next week. So right. it'll be ready to go. So that's well, why we're waiting. And I don't want to, she doesn't want people coming in right now. Now, let me ask so, you this. I mean, everybody end. knows somebody think, uh, that's in real estate. Are you, are you, are you if, uh, if there was an option for you to make some more money on this, and, and if by listing it with another one of your friends, i.e. me, <laughs> we could net you a couple hundred yeah. thousand more. No, I, I'm not going to listen to with another that. friend, but I'm very happy for you to, to bring somebody in and get a commission on selling it. So Beautiful. That's uh, what I'd be happy to have you do. Wonderful. Well, so, we'll keep alrighty, an eye out for you it. So thank much. you so much for your time, Rhonda. And again, uh, my name's Alma. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, Kay. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I, I, I never trust if it, the phone is hung up or not. You know what right. I mean? I, I, I have to wait. watch. When this list pops up right here, okay. that's when it hangs up. Okay, I'll, I'll watch for yeah, that. You'll yeah, you'll see like that, and then this will pop up right here, and then you'll know it's. Yeah, yeah. she was very determined. I thought it was a guy at first. I'm so sorry, Rhonda. I thought it was a guy at first. Yeah, I actually did. Too. For a while, I thought it was Robert, <laughs> yeah. her husband. But that's why you always ask. Yeah. That's actually why on my when i script when i call people i don't say hi is this so and so never say that never assume who it is i always just say hi i was calling about you have a home for sale and then i ask them their name because i've been wrong so many freaking times i'm like oh i'm sorry uh, you're kind of cutting it oh i'm a i'm a woman oh i'm sorry uh, you're cutting out a little bit because hey people's voices are different and and you just got to be as flux, you know, as, as fluid as you possibly can through this process. So, yeah. you know, I like how you didn't give up so easy. You kept going in, kept going in, being persistent. That's really good. I yeah. like that. I really want to find out, like, it, 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 you know, here's the thing. Her friend, they probably live right there in that area. Um, you know, uh, you could tell that they're, they're close friends. They've, they've been talking about the house, that type of thing. Like, I don't really care. All I care about is making sure that at the end, it's the best scenario for her. Yeah. It, honestly, if, if this was an agent that I had heard of before and that was a killer agent, I'd still go for it. Yeah. Um, but I would end the call knowing that, hey, they're in good hands still. Yeah. You know, even though I feel like I'm the best agent for the job, I still uh, want to give them the best opportunity. I believe that 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 we are the best. Yeah. That we can we know how to sell the homes correctly, we know how to price them correctly. I believe that in our marketplace and a lot of people will disagree with me because they're like, dude, this marketplace is so inflated. People are not leaving money on the table. Yes, they are constantly. Yeah. I see it every day. I see, I see like this one I just closed yesterday or day before yesterday, 900,000 bucks, man. They thought they were going to get 745 for it. Wow. They're like, if we can get 745, we'll be stoked. I'm all, no, nah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, but you're, it's worth nine, Yeah, you know? Or it's, it's like, were, were the, you the listing agent or the, the buyer? I was agent? the listing agent. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yep. So uh, my business is about 50, 50. Cause if you hold all the inventory, if you're the one that has all the listings, all the inventory, you also will be the one that controls the buyers. You'll get all of the buyers that are unrepresented calling you on the phone. Yeah. And for every 10 signs that you have out in the marketplace, you'll get between 10 and 15 qualified, ready to rock buyers per month. So if you can get 10 signs out into the marketplace, 10 listings out there, you'll and, and maintain that, you'll yeah. have, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. Well, uh, <laughs> let's keep it going, man. So we're uh, one for two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do, I'll just put her on my calling system. I can disposition people and put them in different spots. So I'm just going to put this one into um, no answer because I want to call her back later and just see if they actually ended up listing it or not. So, and we're ready to rock again. <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Hello. Hi, hey, I was calling about, um, you had a, a home for sale here in Pleasant Grove a little bit ago. Did you end up selling that? Uh, the four pack? You mean the first one? Yeah, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you still have yeah, it? Yeah, we are. 
we're we are still in the process of yeah settling. So okay. Okay. We do. Um, okay. My name my name's Alma. I'm with Century Twenty One. I'm sure you've had a ton of agents calling you trying to list it, right? <laughs> I have had a few. Yeah, <laughs> that would be true. <laughs> well, fortunately, the purpose for my call is we just sold a couple other properties not far from me there. We do, we've done a ton of multi-units. I didn't realize this was a fourplex. That's awesome. Um, and so yeah. I'm just calling to get some info about it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah. Okay. So share with me. So it's a fourplex. How many square feet per unit? Uh, the, uh, the upstairs one had like uh, I I don't I should know exact, but it's about twelve fifty upstairs and about eleven fifty downstairs, I think. Okay. In each unit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so these are pretty big units. Um uh, I guess I guess it's relative. Yeah. It's well, I mean, compared to, to I'd say your average bedroom, unit, bedroom. unit size would be like, you know, a two bed, two bath, nine hundred square foot is kind of like average for fourplexes. But this are these three bedrooms? Yeah, they're three bedroom, two bath okay. units. Yep. <clears throat> okay, and that's really highly desirable. So three bed, two bath. How long have you been trying to sell it? Just a few days. Okay. So we we are doing an open house tomorrow, and that would be the first time I actually like show it since we have to work around our tenants. So right, yeah, and that's kind of the best way so, to get people in there is like once or twice a week, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a fourplex and it twelve hundred per unit. What did you say the basement units were? <clears throat> Sorry, the what? The, the the lower units. What did you say the square footage was on those? I think they I. I said 1150, but maybe they're 1100 because I was trying to match the okay. square footage with what it says. So yeah, I think 1100. Okay. So top units 1250 ish, 1100 on the bottom units. Three bed, two yeah. bath. Yeah, I think so. But the, the three bedroom, two bath. Yeah, the downstairs units have a two car garage. Oh, they do. Okay. And the upstairs units have a really large. Deck. I should figure out the square footage of the deck. It's probably uh, <laughs> anyway. It spans a two-car carport and a two-car garage. That's how big the deck is. It's over a two-car carport, two-car garage. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, cool. And were these originally yeah. fourplexes, or, or were these converted houses? No, no. It was. Yeah, it was. We are the original owners. It was built as a fourplex. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Awesome. What year were they built? Uh, 97. Oh, they were. Okay. 1997. Okay, cool. And you were the original builder. That's that's nice. Don't see too many yeah. of those available yeah. anymore. What are you asking? What's your, your asking price? I have it at 1295 right now. Okay, so 1.295 essentially. <clears throat> that seems like a good price. Any offers yet? Um, I a couple. Yep. Okay. Were they were I they decent or did they suck? Oh, uh, one was super little ball. The other was probably decent. Okay. But we're just I hadn't like it was really the first decent one, so I I'm just continuing to try to get it out there. Okay. Yeah. The reason I asked there's there's so many investors that want these, you know, obviously, I mean, anybody who wants yep. it, they're, they're probably going to get it for an investment or you might have somebody who wants to live in it and own it. Um, I have one client yeah. who's kind of looking in this category as a buyer, but the reason I bring that up is uh, <clears throat> if it can be marketed correctly, you know, you, you could get full price more, maybe a little bit more. I keep seeing these units sell just for astronomical prices. So yeah. I don't yeah. know. How do you feel like it's priced at 1.2 or 1.29? I should say. Uh, I think, I think, I think it's okay. I think I, I think I might be um, a little high, okay. but I, 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 that was intentional. 
Right. Well, it's good. Um, it, it's good to price it a little high because then you can you can if you market it correctly, you can get a lot of data back from that price. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can get a lot of data back from that price, and then and then you can adjust it down incrementally till you hit the right price point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good. it's better to price it low and then wonder yeah. if you left money on the table, you know? Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to do that. But there was this other property I just sold in I, Pleasant Grove and it was, they were asking a million bucks for it and they actually had it listed. They had mm-hmm. it online with another real estate agent for over a year and could not get it sold. And so with our marketing and our exposure, the process that we use to market homes, we, we increased the price to 1.25 and we had it sold in a week to an out-of-state buyer. And wow. so if you can market it correctly, wow. you can get the right data that tells you where you're priced. You know, I have another house up in Bountiful. We priced it really high and we weren't getting any showings, but we saw all the data indicating, hey, we, we're getting a ton of views, which usually indicates, hey, people are looking at it, but if they're not offering, then you got to adjust it down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's, I'm sure that's the advantage of, of listing it with an agent who has access to all that information. And so yeah. we are, we just, we, we are just giving, we're just trying, we're going to just try this, but I do have an agent kind of in the, in who's on the wings in, waiting the loop, yeah. in case we decide to go. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, yeah. And li- listing it may not be your yeah. best option. You know, it may be if you can sell this thing, no, you know, nobody really wants to work with an agent if they don't have to. If you can sell this thing for a good, good, solid price, high price. And like I said, it's tough to see what the, to know if it's, if you're selling it at full market value, because you can't necessarily see that all the data on it. But if, um, yeah. and, and you said you, you can see where that would be a value. I would say that's a value, but I would say that the best value of working with an agent is the fact that, it can be two things actually. One is that you can highly expose it to buyers all over the nation, yeah. you know, and you can target market the specific type of buyers. Like for instance, when I called you, I didn't yeah. even know this was a do, uh, fourplex because Zillow only told me yeah. that it was a house. <laughs> so mm. uh, in the info, in the info that they sent me, you know, it, it only said it was a 1990, uh, it does say 1997. Um, but it just says, you know, single family residence. So it didn't identify. So I'm thinking, all right, this is just a, you know, 40 or 4,700 square foot house. And so if that data is going out there, it's obviously going out to multiple places. So the, the, the other benefit is you can, well, you can expose it. The other benefit is then you can negotiate it correctly and get the right consultation on, you know, which offer to take and those types of things could, could make you, you know, thousands, thousands more. So. Okay, that cool. Sense. What was your name? Yeah. Uh, it's Cynthia. Cynthia, okay. Are you? When did you say you're doing the open house? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, between four and six. Between four and six, okay. Do you care if I pop in and take a look at it? No, yeah, you are you are welcome to do that. Okay, cool. And you know that I obviously want an opportunity. I'll just, it would be a good opportunity also to meet you, shake your hand. I'll, I'll do a little bit of research on it, see where I think your values are at based on my experience. Um, I've been doing this about okay. al- almost 20 years. So it's um, well, sold a ton, well. a ton, a ton of units. So, um, and then if it, yeah. if it, I'll show you kind of share yeah. with you what I found and see where your values at. And if, if it makes sense to, for us to work together on it at some point, then, okay. you know, definitely you'll know as well as I will if that will make sense. If not, you know, no big deal. Okay. Okay. Does that work? All right. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. That, that works. Cool. So I'll see you tomorrow between four and okay. six at your open house. And then again, my name's Alma. Alma. That's yeah. a good name. Thank okay. You. Okay. Hey, uh, thank awesome. You. And then if you have right, any questions, we'll if you have any questions or you, is it you and your hubby that are selling this? Um, it, 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 um, he has some health issues, so it's just, it's just me. Just you. Okay. <laughs> so cool. So I'll just meet you there. Yeah. And, yeah. um, yeah, if you, if you come up with any questions, this is my cell number. 
so you can just call me back but i'll okay. just plan on seeing you tomorrow and then between now and then i'll do a little research on it and if it does work cool love to okay. list the property and work with you on it and if not no big deal okay okay sounds okay. good Elma. Awesome. thank you thanks cynthia you got it i'll see you tomorrow okay. bye-bye okay bye There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Alma, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. The people are back. I like it. You I know what? Here, I was here last week. We only set one appointment last week. You're right. The people are back. The people were gone. <laughs> you we're, were here. We had so you many empty left. phones. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. You know what? We got a, uh, another listener slash viewer, Ashley Madison. Ashley, are you still are you still on? Leave a comment in the in the section if you're still on. If you're still on, we'll give you a chance to spin the wheel and hopefully get a prize. Where are we at? We got crickets? What's going on? Crickets. Ashley, you there? Talk to us. Talk to me, Ashley. Tell me something. All right. So right now I'm just writing down all the info for oh, tomorrow. There she is. We got a little delay here. So, but uh, awesome. Ashley, hello. And, uh, you said my last name right, too. Oh, very nice. Madison. Yeah, I can read. <laughs> 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 Apparently, I couldn't last one, though. You couldn't. You couldn't <laughs> I couldn't read one. Lynn. Uh, but you know what? I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to spin the wheel. You want, you want to spin the wheel, Daniel? Can you get up here and spin the wheel? Let's go ahead and change these. And uh, Ashley, let's give you a chance to spin and uh, win a prize. Ashley, real quick, where are you located? Are you here in Utah, or where are you located? See, we'll give her a chance to respond. Sweet. Is there any way you could change that delay? It's pretty. No? No way. Okay. All right. It is what it is. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to give you a chance to spin. And she's located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Really? No there way. Chat Town, baby. Tennessee in the house. Tennessee. 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 Hold on. Tennessee. Ashley, how did you hear about us? Was it was it Real Estate Mastermind? Was it Alma's... Uh, Alma's uh, Post. Post in there. Let's see. How bad it was. All right. Yeah, these uh it's horrible, the delay. There's gotta be a way to change it. I wonder how. Huh? Oh, is it? Okay, that's why. All right. Anyways, Ashley, uh, let's go ahead and have you spin the wheel. Three, I'll tell you when. Don't go you don't. Go ahead. There we go. We were just talking about Tennessee, Ashley. That's cool. Journal. Journal headed your way, Ashley. Get a hold nice. of Judy, uh, Judy Ford, and I'll go ahead and actually send you her contact. If Judy's watching, if she's not watching... Uh, but she will go ahead and reach out to you. Let me go ahead and get you this. So this is Judy's number. So Judy is uh, one of our good friends here at one of our coaches. One of the coaches too here at ESS Ever Sell System. But there's her number there. Oh, Judy, there you go. She's hey, VP, Judy. VP of Marketing or no, v VP of Coaching. I should say. I Wait. think that's what. Your that, technical official that, title is, right? VP of. That was the wrong one. Let me go. There we go. There's Judy. All right. Judy will get a hold of you, Ashley, and send out the journal. journal. So so talk to me about the journal. What is the journal? What, what are they getting? So the journal, journal, actually being candid, I don't know. I, I've actually never seen one, but I know it's kind of like an Everest-themed journal. So you can just take notes in it. Oh, right awesome. It, here's the thing, too, guys. If you have, I always have a, a notebook, a playbook. I have my playbook here, right? Um, so you always, you always want to have like a journal or something, uh, that you take, you take notes in, cause you're going to have these thoughts throughout your day and throughout your life that are really critical. And especially in this business. And when you're talking to people and helping people out on the phone, you'll come across these like thoughts or things that you said that you're like, Oh, this, that was really good. I should say that next time. Or cause here's the thing. All of the success that you need is already within you. Everything you need is already within you. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. you. Everything you need is already within you. And coaching only brings out what's already within you. Yeah, you'll learn some skills along the way and some techniques, but everything that you need to succeed, be happy, be successful is already within you. All we do as coaches and on our 
team and when we do these lives and stuff, we just bring out of you what you already know is there. And so when that stuff pops up, you want to have a journal to write it down so that you remember it because we tend to just, we'll see stuff and then we just mow over it. We don't remember it and we should. And so that's why we have these journals. That's why I've had a journal for years now. And every time I go into a meeting or anything, I don't write notes in just a typical notebook when I'm in, like when I'm learning, I write notes in a journal so that I can go back to my journal, write notes, have that information and all the things inside my head that are just popping right and left that I need to write down. The journal, to to use your your note-taking as a journal rather than putting in a notebook that you're never going to pick back up again is pretty critical to your success long-term because it it helps you to just, it helps you internalize it. Like when we do our for sale by owner script, like whenever I make these calls, it's a script. Every call I make is a script. The way I ask people questions, everything it's on our script. It's in our script book. It's just a matter of like, I want to make it mine. And so when you come to our live trainings, our prospecting schools, and we get people literally from all over the nation that come to the prospecting schools, I've been to brokerages all over the nation and, and taught and did all, both sides of the freaking United States. I can't wait till I go international and do this stuff. This is going to be fun. But um, when, when I do that, it, I'm always bringing these scripts that are like blank, have a lot of blank spots in them so that people can fill in the blanks as they learn the information. Then you have your script that now is in your, has your handwriting it has your way of thinking. You'll put little notes next to it and stuff. You've just made that script that was created by somebody else. You just made it yours. You just made it intimately yours because it's got your handwriting, your notes, your information. You made that script now yours and it internalizes it on a better level. Same thing journals do. You internalize it on a better level if you have a journal that you're writing in rather than just a piece of note paper that you're going to throw off to the side and forget yeah. about if you yeah. if you have it in the same journal that you sit down and you write at, at the end of the night and you're writing in your journal and you're talking about your kids and the cute things that they did or you're talking about the vacation you just took or whatever or this amazing anniversary you just had or whatever it is whatever you write in your journal you know the the last moments that you had with your grandpa or your grandma when they passed away whatever those sacred moments are if you also put your notes of what you're learning every day in that journal they now become sacred. They now become something that is cherished in your life. And you can watch as you write notes and you go back. And if I go back to like my journals that I started writing almost, you know, 18 or 20 years ago, or whatever. Yeah. And I go back to those old journals. I'm like, holy cow, the way I viewed that concept or that, you know, aspect of real estate versus how I view it now, it grows Totally different. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. like, it's, like, it's like a time capsule, huh? Oh, Go, it's so back rad, that. man. Yeah. Well, we are two for three. Two for three? Not bad. Two yeah. for three, not bad. Was I, it like 70%, 75%. I tell somewhere? people that I can set <laughs> nine out of 10. So if we can maintain uh, the next uh, whatever, I'm, I got two more sheets of paper here. So I was planning on at least four. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get them. Let's get it going. Let's go. Two out of three. But anybody two out of three. mind, you know, learning how to. Do two out of three? That doesn't suck. Oh, that's good. All right, let's go in. We're dialing. All has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Everything. Hello. Hi. Hey, I was calling about uh, you had a, a lot for sale a little bit ago here in Provo. Are you still selling that or did you sell that? Yeah, still selling it. Okay. And you're selling that for sell by owner, is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, my name is Alma. I'm with Century 21. I'm sure you've had just a ton of agents calling you trying to list it, right? <laughs> uh, yep. Well, fortunately, purpose for my call, I just sold a couple other properties not far from you there and uh, a couple more down in um, like Salem and Payson and stuff like that. So I do a lot of lot and land development and sales. So I was just calling to get some info about this one. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So what are you asking for it right now? Uh, three ninety five. Three ninety five. Okay. Cool. So three ninety five. And then how how big is it? Um, point two eight acres. Two eight. Okay. 
And then is it fully improved? Like, is it in a neighborhood with curb and gutter and all that? Yep. Okay, sweet. So you've got all, all everything's pulled, all the, all your lines and electrical and water and everything's there. Yep. Fully improved. Okay, sweet. How did you come across this property? Uh, we've just owned it for a long time. Have you? Good for you. That's a good turnover. So three ninety five, and then you said it's a how big? How big a lot is it? Uh, point two eight. Two eight. Two eight. Okay, sorry, I did write that down over here. Okay, point two eight. You're asking three ninety five. Okay, and then um, any hits or offers on it? Uh, yeah, we have a couple couple of people coming on Saturday. Come take a look at it. Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> how did you come up with the price? Are, do, you, do you have a buyer, man? I don't know. Do you have someone I that's interested in buying the lot? If, if not, I, I, I don't have. I don't have too much time to. No, to I haven't answer questions. That I are haven't. I haven't seen it. I know. Kind of I know they. To me at the moment. I know they sound trivial. I know it sounds trivial. Um, just to give you a little more background, so I've sold lots here in the area for almost twenty years, and so just kind of understanding the nature of the lot is pretty important in order to secure a buyer for it. And so um, the, the info that I have on it is pretty limited. So if you're okay asking, answering a few more questions, okay. that, that would be awesome. Um, it, it may or may not sure, let's, you know, let's make see sense what you to you, but um, okay. So, and you're just selling it. Let's see, where was, where was that? Oh, okay. So East Bench of Slate Canyon. So I'm kind of familiar with that area right there. Did, is there, is there, is it a view lot? I think that's what it says in the listing. Yeah. Does it? Okay. So it has views. Okay. And why, why not just... So it's in uh, a cul-de-sac. Oh, it wow. is in cul-de-sac. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so cul-de-sac. And then how long have you been selling it? Uh, I think I've had it up to like 10 days. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, maybe a week. Okay. With that price point, it seems like it's priced well for the area. And you said you have a couple people coming to look at it on Saturday. I'm surprised it hasn't sold yet with the way the market is. Do you think, is there anything that you've learned that may be preventing it from selling or? I mean, it's been, on, it's been, it's been lifted on, uh, you know, Zillow and, uh, KSL for a week. So. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> well, let me ask you this. I don't, I don't know what you're trying to So here's my... I, I'm not in a hurry to sell it. Okay. We, good. I own it outright. I'm not in a hurry to sell it. I don't need the money. Good. I'm just not going to use a lot for what I thought I was going to use it for. Okay. So I'm selling it. Um, hence why I'm selling it for sub by owner. Okay, perfect. But, you know, it's like, uh, let, let's say it's a year from now and it doesn't sell, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I'll, I'll uh, give Century 21 uh, a call. It seems like they have some sort of automated system that's just uh, pinging all their, <laughs> their real estate folks. <laughs> have you had a lot of calls from C21? For sub by owner, here, here, here's a, yeah, I guess, probably 30. Have you? Well, at least um, they're doing their freaking job. Here, do not call it. That'd, that'd be, <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. I mean, it, it never really makes no. sense. Nobody really wants to work with an agent if they can help it, right? I mean, it doesn't. It, it wouldn't make sense unless you can get a tremendous amount of value. And I'll be candid. Most agents that you're going to talk to on the phones are not worth working with or listing anything with. But if there's a certain amount of value, if we can bring value to the table, you know, if we can bring 10% and you're only paying, you know, three to one, you know, to each agent on it, but, but you're making 10 additional, then that would be value, right? I mean, you'd see value in something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's really the angle that I'm coming at it from. It's it, cause I know, you know, just as well as you do that nobody really wants to work with an agent. If you can save commissions and make more money in your pocket, that's awesome. However, if that agent has this, the ability, the marketing, you know, resources and things like that to, you know, not sell it for three ninety five, but maybe sell it for, you know, four fifty or something like that to the right out of state buyer. I mean, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like if you if you want to try and if you're going to go find a buyer that's going to pay however much, you know, 3% or whatever you guys end up charging over what our asking price is, then that's fine. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have no problems with that. But a lot of, a lot of you guys call and you're saying, Hey, I can list on MLS. It's like, well, 
No. Well, good for you. you yeah, know no. I mean? So it's, like, it's, it's not like you have a line of line of people wanting to buy lots. You're, exactly. You're gonna get more views by putting it on the MLS. And yeah, and I'll be I'll sells. be candid at, with you. Like at this point in time, I'm I'm willing to 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 keep my margin on it. Uh huh. Because uh, I'm just not in a hurry. Yeah, and I'll be. I'll I don't be, owe anything on it. It's just sitting there. And I'll be candid with you. Like I'm in no hurry either. Here's the reality: is that if you can price a property high and get a higher offer on it by marketing it correctly and, and being kind of like the MLS, it's not. Oh, what, what's your, so explain to me your, how, how do you market? Great question. Great question. So, it, so the way that I view it, the MLS is a, it's a good data tool, but it's, no, no, how it's do actually you, how do you, a terrible how do you marketing tool. Market outside of the MLS. Exactly. So, so the, the MLS is a terrible marketing tool. So what we do, sorry, there's a little delay, obviously. Right. But, so, so I'm asking, I'm asking you, I'm asking how you, who is one of many people under Century 21, right, is going to market differently than every other person that's called me. Yeah, sorry, this this freaking I'm having a delay on my phone and it is annoying. But here's here's how we do it to answer your question: is we market the property. We have over 850 affiliate marketing platforms, so that are better in most cases, not all the cases, but in most cases, they are better than the local MLS. To give you an idea, the MLS will give you about a little less than 10% of your views. And these other platforms are getting you your other 90% of views, literally. And so we find more clients from not the MLS than we do from the MLS here in Utah. And that's not the case with every MLS. That's just our MLS. It's the only one that really matters. So I guess why why would I go? I mean, I've had like thirty phone calls from Century Twenty One, Century Twenty One Everest, yada mm-hmm. yada yada. Right. We sell high end homes. I sold lots. I mean, it's the right. same pitch. Blah blah blah. So yeah. Exactly. Why why are you going to be different than them? You know, I would just say that are I you, uh, are you different from all all these other realtors? Experience, yeah, and experience comes from. Now, granted, I've been in the business for almost twenty years. But experience doesn't come from years in the business. It comes from the amount of transactions that you've sold. So in that 20 years, it's all I've done. I've never had another job. I've never done a side job through, through weird up and down markets, um, through growth cycles and, and so, you know, the drop you know, in the marketplace. I've been there and I've made money and helped my clients sell their properties. And so that's why you would choose some, I'm not uh-huh. even saying you know, you'd choose me. I'm just saying, because if you and I don't jive and we don't, <laughs> we don't communicate well, we're probably not going to want to work together. We don't anyways, drive, I but, just, like, I'm, no, it's not like I'm just, I'm going to, you know, you guys call me, so I'm going to push back a little bit. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I, I, expect I just you feel too. like you, I've, I've had more calls from Century 21 than, than anyone else. You know, if you're going to list on the MLS, great. I can go find any Tom, Dick, and Harry that's going <laughs> to cut me in on 75% of their commission and go do that. It's right, like, right. if you have a buyer, hit me up. Right. Let's go, let's go show this lot. If you want to make some money on it, right. Then sell your buyer, tell them, Hey, don't go with the KSL. You know, uh, it, it's price is actually 30 grand more than what, what uh, the KSL listing shows. So you can make some money. Right. Exactly. You know, I, uh, but well, right, let, right now, I just feel like it's fairly priced. And if you want to bring someone to the table, then, then we can talk about it. But okay. I don't need help in listing it at the moment. A year down the road, if it hasn't sold, then I uh, feel free to reach out. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, there would be no need for you to list it if we couldn't provide value. With that being said, if we could figure out a way, and, and this may or may not make sense, it may not work, but if we could figure out a way by looking at the numbers, we could net you more money by even after listing it, put in your pocket more than what you're asking, and sell it You know, in the next 30, 40 days, and like I said, it may or may not make sense, but if we could do that, you'd be open to at least exploring it, right? No, I wouldn't. You That's wouldn't? a great sales question, though. Yeah, it's a great. I, I mean, because here's the thing: no, I would not be be willing to explore, but that's a, that's a really good like prop to you. That's a thank really you. Good question. No, I appreciate it, and because here's the thing: very something. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to yes, if you can make me more money, then we'll work together. Yes, if I can see it just like you can see it then we'll work together. Yes. It's more value for us. I, to I just, man, I, I'm at that point. Yeah. I'm at the point. If you have a buyer, hit me up. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, you this. If we can find you multiple buyers, it, hit me up. if we can find you multiple buyers at, you know, 30 grand more, you'd be open to exploring that. Right. If, if you got a buyer, hit me up. I'm not exploring anything. If you have somebody yeah. that wants a lot in Provo, that that's a view lot. That's uh-huh. 0.28 acres. That's fully improved. 
give me a ring. You're in a good spot. In I, ba- I, and I'm going to hop off the phone real quick. Yeah, you're in a good but, spot uh, and you're in a bad your spot because you're. If you got somebody that hits you up, let me know. Because you don't have to sell it, right? So you're you're kind of just relaxing on it, right? Yeah, he just hung up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna give you the applause though. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Relentless, Bro. hey, and he but gave you props thing. on that too because it, it it was true and you deserved it because I had a feeling he was gonna do that because he didn't yeah. seem like he was open to to listing it. But uh, that is such a good line. That is such a good line, you know, to, to you know, at least exploring it. I mean, bro, that is, <laughs> is But here's golden. the thing. Like, he's in, and what I was trying to say to him before he, he hung up on me, and here's the good thing. We had great rapport. Uh-huh. He wasn't pissed at me when we hung up. I'm going to call him back in a couple months. Yeah, hey, you he remember me? You, yeah. Here's the thing. Like, oh, you're going to get that listing if it don't sell. I already know At it. some point, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. He's not getting good exposure. I mean, he's got it on two websites, both of which are not good websites long term. Like Zillow gives you in, incomplete information. KSL is going down as far as numbers big time and um, gets little to no traffic on houses anymore because you have you have you have Facebook Marketplace that kills our KSL. Our lo- KSL.com is a classified ads Kind of like a Craigslist for Utah, Wyoming, yeah. these surrounding areas here. It used to just be like popular as crap. Like if you want to sell something, you put it on KSL and it's gone, right? Since Facebook has created Marketplace, now KSL has dropped drastically. And so he has it on there. He has it on KSL and he has it on, um, what do you say, Zillow, I guess. Yeah, Zillow. Yeah. And Zillow is not good for land because Zillow is based on is based on views. And if you don't have good pictures and stuff like that, you're not going to get a lot of views. Like people don't want to look at dirt. So Zillow's really popular if you can get good photography on there. Right. Yeah. Hold on. Let, hold on. We, we, we got to go to what the guy said yeah. because <laughs> he did admire you as a, uh, and he, he hate to call yourself a salesperson, but he did admire you as a, and you're a leader. You know what I mean? The, the great leadership on the call. But I mean, Say what you said again. What is that come? Like, what does that come back? I mean, what, what what is that? I mean, say it again. Obviously, if we could figure out a way that by working together, we could net you more money or bring you more value by listing it and putting in your pocket the most amount of money, you'd be open at least exploring that, right? Yeah, that's the general way that I say it. I think I said it slightly different yeah. there, but uh, I got that from a friend of mine. His name was Dave Stoko. Yeah. And Dave, Sto- you've probably heard that name before, yeah. right? Yeah. So Dave Stoko, he was an agent here locally, and when he was showing or when he was evicting somebody from one of his units that he had for sale, um, he was murdered by the tenant's boyfriend. Yeah, was sad. And so, but Dave Stoko and I used to sit next to each other in uh, our, when we were first starting out at Everest years ago, this is 15 years ago, something like that. And he would, he and I would sit next to each other. And the, the line that he would use was like this logic, boom, aha line and that's where I got this from, is he would ask them that question. You know, I, he'd say, I mean, obviously there's a certain amount of cash you got to get out of this property in order to make it worth it for you to sell, right? And they'd go, yeah. And then he'd say, if we can figure out a way that by working together, we can net you that money, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? And I would say- Who would I, say no to that? Who, who could say no to that? I mean, that guy said no, but- <laughs> But then he's like, uh, that's a great question. Yeah, it you know? is. Yeah, he recognized it. It was awesome. And so Stoko taught me that, and he taught me a bunch of other stuff, but he was so- Stoko was such a dynamic human being all the way across the board. He loved people. He loved his family. He loved having a great time with his friends. Um, he was sincere. He was integral. His intention whenever working with a client was to make sure that the best scenario worked for them ultimately that that love for people is what ended up getting him killed Mm -hmm. because what happened was he was um he was letting these people live there for free for a few months till they got on their feet it was this lady and i think she was like a single mom or something and it was this um kind of apartment up in the top of one of the rental properties that he had and uh he said you can live here for x amount of time and then after that you need to pay me or you need to move on, but I'm going to give you an opportunity so you're not homeless with your kid or whatever. Yeah. And so his kindness, his love, ended up being you know his detriment, unfortunately, and that's terrible because that's just the world we live in. But um, he freaking rented it out or let this lady live there and went to evict her because she wasn't fil- you know fulfilling her end of the deal. And when he op- you know went into the uh, made access granted access to the to the property because she wasn't answering the door. 
he figured I'm going to make sure this place isn't jacked up. Uh, right. He gave her notice and all that stuff that she knew he was coming, which unfortunately was, was his demise because um, they were expecting him. And when he opened the door, the guy for, came out from behind him and shot him several times and just killed him there. So, um, but you know, he's, he's the, he was the epitome of integrity and loyalty and love and compassion and service. And unfortunately it just, just didn't work out for him. Yeah. Long term. Well, so. he gave you, uh, gave some, us. some great lessons, man. Oh, tons. I mean, and dude, I could go on that. and on yeah. about lessons I learned from yeah. Stoko, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, just, th- I mean, that, that one alone yeah. is priceless, you know? And if, if, if again, and I, 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 I go right back into the whole, you know, marketing thing. But I mean, if, if you guys do want to see Alma live, you know, and, and learn some of these skills that he teaches, um, you know, come to the um, Everest prospecting school that we do every month or come to the Everest Elevate event uh, next month, April 26th, 27th, and 28th. Mm-hmm. I believe it's a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Right. Um, but yeah, come by and see and, and, and watch. I mean, that, we're two out of four right now, 50 percent, which is actually not bad but it's, <laughs> i i know you can do better it just you, yeah. you know it's 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 people on the other end too but i'm just like damn you did so good in the last one i mean dude shout out because that was i mean he even recognized that it was like whoa well no <laughs> no failures right only lessons yeah, yeah so it was a good lesson it was good information I'm, I'm i'm already thinking like what could i have said different to cause him to say yes i don't know i mean there's there's got to be something i think the delay I do think the follow-up the delay was is hard. It. I think the follow-up is going to get it because you, you and I both know the agents are calling like crazy. Right. Um, they're, they're, that's fine. That's oh, just a, they're that's probably bugging him. You know what I mean? He's probably irritated. Oh, he's totally that's, irritated. That's, that's, the, the, that's the, the feeling I got. Well, and the funny thing is, like, he, he doesn't realize, like, I was, I mean, I, I, you got to have a, a, a servant's heart, right? I, I was having a servant's heart there. He, his listing was the lowest of the low. It's 395000 bucks. I mean, I could have dumped that and gone for an, another higher one, right? But my intention is to serve people, and I don't care if it's a three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars listing or a three point five mil. It doesn't matter. I still want to serve that person the best way possible to them. And he's like, oh, "I have time, and I don't need to sell it, and those types of things." But when you do sell it, you do need the most amount of money. Yeah. And so, you know, if you can have that servant's mindset or servant's heart of, "I'm going to serve this guy first. I'll count my money later." I'm not going to care if it's a 395 unit. You know, there are some things I won't do. Like I won't do trailer homes. Yeah. You know, I, it's just outside of not here, not not in this market. They're so cheap. They're like yeah. 100 grand or less, you know. Yeah. So it's hard it's hard to justify putting your time into a mobile home or something here. Other markets that makes sense, but not here. Yeah. Yeah, Utah's booming right now. Let's get back to some calls, Let's man. Get I think it. We got like 30 minutes left. We can Let's get us another one, baby. Let's do it. a couple more man i need to know if you're scary poster i'm sorry i missed your call please leave me a message and I... hello hi you have reached luann's phone sorry i missed you please. now you'll be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk so i'm letting them talk gotta keep quiet maneuver and signs to let them and talk up their body get another one body that's just how it go i got some secrets i'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes stay in your lane how to stay on the go i can't play with the- hi you you reached becky north you see the message but never the adapted so i'm to the one if it's coming to blows my enemies leave a message people what do you know i had them will do we ever spoke i'm ready for smoke i need to know hello you reach John Anderson. Please leave me a message, and I'll give you a. I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I happen to Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready. That's a common name, John Anderson. Turn up a ghost. I need to know everything. Now they ain't go harder than me. They need to play it. Hello. Hi. Hey, I was calling about. Um, you had a property for sale here in Lehigh a little bit ago. Did you ever end up selling that? We did. Did you? Okay, just checking. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, bye. You're welcome. Bye. So Ashley, Ashley has a question. Yes. Um, Ashley said, do you ever leave a voicemail or do you always skip and on to the next? Great question. So yes, I'm leaving a voicemail every single time. So whenever there's a voicemail, I push a button that says voicemail. Um, I can either, I can either like record the call, redial the call, push a voicemail. So I push this button that says voicemail. It has a pre-recorded voicemail on it uh, with my voice. 
And so I le- it leaves a message for them. So yeah, great question. So if you have the right calling system, I always recommend red, the Red X. I think it is far superior to everything that I've seen. Um, they have great leads and they have a great dialer and they're integrated. So when you pull up your leads, you your dialer is already integrated. And what I mean by integrated is the leads are already in the dialer ready for you to go. Whereas with other lead sources, you have to download the leads in a file on your computer. Then you have to down upload them into a dialer. And sometimes that gets annoying just to do the extra steps. I mean, it's bad enough just to bring yourself to make a call. But if you have to do all these steps yeah. before you make the call. <laughs> so I, for me, it's tough because I'm like, oh, I always get nervous before I make calls. And so uh, like I, I always... Like if I, the, the fewer amount of steps I have to make to get on the phone, the better for me. Cause I'll find reasons not to, you know, yeah. like I'll, I'll dink around on Facebook or Instagram or I'll eat something or go to the bathroom or, I mean, just all the different things that you make up to distract to yourself. Distract yourself. Yeah. So yeah, we do, we do leave messages. Sorry. That was kind of a really long. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, bro. Let's see. Oh, she did. She said she did sell, right? Okay. <clears throat> Let me change that disposition. And resume. <clears throat> and you can run the system on your cell phone too, which is cool. Now you'd be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk. So it's been forwarded to an so automatic on, voice message system. Eight zero. So if you're on vacation or something, you didn't reach your goals. You can just sit on the beach and make calls. Or use your iPad like this. It sounds so glorious to sit on the beach and work. I'm currently unable to take your call. I've worked next to a swimming pool, but I've never actually worked on the beach. <laughs> I need to do that. Call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Eight zero one eight. Hi, this is Clint. Leave me a message and I'll call you right back. Thanks. And I always get the question, don't you ask to see if you can earn them as a buyer? Yeah, we do. I do when I'm doing it alone. Hello? Hi. Hey, I was calling about... Uh, you had a property for sale a little bit ago here in Pleasant Grove. Did you ever end up selling that? Oh, hey, hold up. I don't know if you didn't. I, sometimes that delay, I think. I'm just going to put that as no answer and move on. Call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Yeah, if I'm making calls like this, like I'm just trying to get through it pretty quick. So I don't zero, go into one, the buyer eight, questions and zero, stuff like that. Three, zero. Six, three, zero. Hey, this is Paul. Leave me a voicemail and I'll call you back. Hi, thanks for calling. I'm not able to take your call right now, but if you leave your name, so I, we are getting into probably like month old stuff. But Hi, this is Chip Fowler. Please leave me a message and I'll call you back. At the Our call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Eight. Ryan Corbin. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press. I think I had a. I wasn't on these. I thought I had an appointment with him at one point. Hi, this is Tom Coburn. Also, the phone number for the Beatles tribute group. Imagine. <laughs> Beatles tribute group. <laughs> Whoa. Imagine. That's a cool. Tribute group. Oh yeah. Please leave your message for seven zero two. I think that's what he said. Imagine. Yeah. Something like that. <clears throat> but isn't that John? John Lennon. Please leave your message for Ophelia. Oh, 
I just decline. If they're calling me back, I'll just yeah. decline them and hit them back later. I need to know everything. Who in the what in the where? I need everything. Hi, it's Sam. Hi. Hey, I was calling about uh, you had this property for sale over here on Salmon Drive in South Jordan. Are you still selling that? Uh, not in the way you think. No. <laughs> okay. So, are you, are you selling it for sale so, by owner, uh, or what's what's your scenario on that? Well, kind of, yes. Uh, it's also sight unseen. Okay. So, if somebody wants it for one and a quarter, they can have it. Um, I, all I can say it's in pristine condition and it's worth about nine. So, Is it okay? So it's worth nine. What makes you think you know, it's worth nine versus one point two? Uh, nine hundred thousand versus one point two five mil. Okay. So some idiot come in from California wants to pay me three hundred thousand more than it's worth. I'll turn the keys over. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I that's mean, as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, yeah, you, 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 you know, you think that's that's you know laughable, and it kind of is, except I sold my last home that way. Well, that's so, what I, I just closed on one. I'm an, I'm a local agent. My name's Alma. Um, I just closed on one in, yeah. um, in Riverton that was like that. They thought it was worth 700. Yeah. We got them nine. Oh, well, 745 and we got them nine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is, I mean, it's, hap- yeah. it's happening constantly. Well, I could tell you mine, right, right. Exactly. Uh, so anyway, I, I could tell you that mine, you know, like I said, it's in pristine condition. Bill has got it listed a little over nine. You know, so it's probably worth somewhere between eight fifty and nine. I don't know. But, okay, is it listed know. with an agent? Again, somebody. Nope. No. Okay. Yeah. Nope, not at all. <clears throat> okay, so if you could get one so one point two five, you'd sell it. Change for. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Keys exchanged for one point two five. Got it. <laughs> exactly. Sounds good, and, why, and I might even vacate. Why are you? Yeah, instead I'm of. Kidding. <laughs> why are you selling it? You're obviously in a good area. Why not just stay there for a while? Yeah, I mean we're in a great area, but we are building a retirement property on a piece of land in in uh, Mississippi that we like, and so and we're both too close to retirement. So. Good for you. That's awesome. Okay. There you go. Well, let me That's ask it. you. I, I've sold a couple other properties not far from you. There. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about it? Uh, real quick, I'm actually in a meeting right now, but uh, okay, you know. So if you got a couple quick, quick ones, I'll give it to you. If yeah, not, I mean either that or if, talk another time. Well, either that it, I can ask a couple quick, or or I can just call you back another time. I don't want to mess up your schedule here, but um, well, go ahead, real quick. Okay, so how many bedrooms does it have? It's got uh, let's see, four completed beds. Yeah. Okay. How is the basement finished? Uh, about half. Okay, about fifty percent. Okay, and then how big's your lot? A uh, lot, actually, it's not very big. I think it's a little under quarter. Okay, like two, three, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay, how many ba- uh, bathrooms? They break lots, aren't they? Okay, uh, three full baths. Three full baths. Actually, okay. and they're all three nice bathrooms. Oh, good. When we okay. had them built, we had them patterned after the master. Okay. And then what's your total square footage? Uh, 44. 40. Okay. 44. Okay. I think it's actually, I think it's 4260 or something like that. Is that anyway. Okay. I'll just look it up online. Okay, cool. And then is, is it, a, is it a two story? I presume, right? No, no. Is it Rambler? Rambler. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I mean, there's a basement, right? But, right. Yeah. Rambler yeah. with the basement. Okay. Yeah, there's just a ton, like 90% of the the um, houses I've sold in that area are are two stories, so <laughs> ironically. Yeah, well, I have bad knees, so that wasn't going to fly. Good. Okay, cool. And then, so you're asking 1.25, and then, um, okay, cool. I think that's about it. Let me ask you this. If, if. Um, if you could sell it, if we could sell it by listing it and net you what you need to on it after commissions and all that, you'd be open to exploring that, right? No, I don't want, 
I don't want the whole staging walkthrough. You know, see, the whole problem with the real estate selling process, and yeah, I know there's, there's no way around this, is you get real estate tourism, and <laughs> we have no interest in that whatsoever. Yeah, so the way the way that I usually avoid that, because you're not the only one who feels that way. I feel that way too. And when I was selling my last house, I felt that constantly. Um, the way we kind of get around that, there's two ways we do it. One is that we do a really good, high-quality, three-dimensional walkthrough tour so that people can see and feel, you know, really get, get a view for it. I mean, this tour is so dynamic that you can actually measure for furniture electronically on the, on the app. And then the other way we do that is when people do Perfect. want it, when people do want to see it and go, Hey, I love this house. I've looked at it online. I did the virtual walkthrough. Um, we want to come see it in person. We say, okay, we're showing it one day this week on Thursday or Saturday or whatever it is for yeah, you, whatever that's works just, for you. That's just not going to happen. So, okay. So you don't want to show the house so, at all. Yeah, you, it, I, I mean, you know, if, if it comes down to it and somebody's, you know, got a signed check and, and, uh, they, they need a yay nay walkthrough. Then, uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's exactly what happened in our last one. Yeah. Well, that's what I just said in, in Pleasant Grove. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just same yeah. thing. Yeah, we had one. So, I mean, the guy, the, that's what I'm open to. Okay, so I think I think really then the the trick or the 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 fix for this would be exactly the technology I was telling you about, because what that does, I mean, this one I just sold in Pleasant Grove, the buyer did not walk through it until the day he was signing on it, and we didn't have to have yeah, that means, you know, a, a whole home tour of of people walking through the house that weren't qualified. I'll tell you what, you know what. Uh, now I'm, I'm I'm already being rude to my to my guy here, and he's one of my top engineers, so I have to I have to be nice to him. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make you laugh. <laughs> not that I, you're not you're, you're definitely one of the top engineers. Just I have to be nice to you. So, <laughs> you know I'm not nice. So anyway, <laughs> hey, um, so I mean, you know, call me back, uh, you know, later today, maybe, okay. and. Uh, uh, I could talk more, more uh, in depth about that. I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah, it might be a good fix so, for what right? you're trying to do. You know. All righty. Yeah. Well, let's do that. I mean, if you're Thanks, if you're if you're at least open to meeting, let's do. I'll be right over by you next Wednesday on the thirtieth. Do you care if I pop in and take a look at uh, it? No, 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 no. So well, no, you don't care, or no, you don't we'll, want to. We'll talk. Okay, cool. I'll call no, you back. I want to talk to you further. Perfect. I'll there call you. you. Okay, my name's Alma. I'll call you back. Bye, Alma. Okay, you got it. Bye. Okay. That was good. That was a good win. <clears throat> yeah, it was good. It was, it was good. kind of a compromise. You got another uh, appointment, which is good. Yeah, it's kind of more of like a call. Like, uh, I think that's the thing, guys, is, is it there's always a fix for somebody's issue right you know his concern was he doesn't want people in his house no. constantly that aren't qualified the 1.2 versus the 900,000 honestly honestly that's that's negligible based on our marketplace right now it could a, a, a two two hundred thousand dollar adjustment is not abnormal yeah I mean I, I could just literally in the last probably 90 days there's been three or four like that they yeah. were two hundred thousand dollars off when they were listing it for sale by owner. Wow. Now he kind of knows that. I think he's probably had a good agent in there who was like, it's worth 900. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's his actual problem. What he, what I think he's trying to do, he's selling it for 1.2. If somebody's willing to pay that, then he'll have them walk through his property. Yeah. It might be a privacy issue for him. Yeah. He doesn't like the feeling of people walking through his home. Yeah. It doesn't sound like uh he needs to sell the property in order to build his dream house in, what did you say, Mississippi? Yeah, and I did a piss-poor job of building on that. But I was low on time. I knew he was sitting there yeah. with somebody in an appointment but or in a meeting um, with an engineer. But um, I did a piss-poor job at on that call of saying, I, I could have said, well, tell me a little bit more where you're going. Why, are you, why do you want to do that? Yeah. And I'll, I'll do that later. So when he has a little more time, he's not sitting there with somebody else, you know, we can go over that, but I'm glad he asked me to call him back. That that was pretty, that was pretty good. So I'm going to put that down as an appointment. It'll just be a phone appointment, but I might, I'm going to, I'm going to, the point of that phone appointment is to go meet with him in the house and get that, that familiarity happening yeah, and that yeah, trust, build yeah. that relationship of trust, you know?
Well, we got 10 minutes left. Is there anybody watching who hasn't but wants to spin the wheel? If Ooh. so, comment in the comment section and we will give you a shot. We got, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, so while you're setting that appointment up, uh, Alma, we just want to remind you guys, if you guys want to see Alma in person, uh, do this live in front of a live audience of 200 plus people. Uh, come to our event, April 26th, 7th, and 28th. Uh, for the Everest Elevate event. And this three-day event, we're focusing on skills, mindset, and discipline. And uh, for all you guys looking to get some coaching, we offer amazing coaching from uh, extremely qualified uh, and amazing coaches like Alma. Yeah, these are all top producers. I mean, you're not getting coached by people who ha haven't sold real estate in 30 years, you know? You're getting coached by, or, or when they did sell real estate, they sold four homes. You yeah. know, or and, and two of them were their own properties, you know, yeah. like those are legit. Those are actual legit numbers of some of the coaches that are in our industry yeah. and kudos to them. They've built great businesses. The reality is, is that I want to learn from people that are doing what I want to do. Yep. Not, not, oh, I learned how to do what you're doing, but I'm not doing it because there's a few things that these people don't know. They don't know how hard it is to get on the phone. They don't know the butterflies in your stomach that are constantly just creeping in and trying to, to, to creep into your brain and, and, and make you do something else for the day. They don't know those things. They haven't done them. Yeah. How could they know? How could they possibly know what it feels like to be like, you know, having a bad day and crap going wrong? I mean, I'm in here doing this right now. I just got a call from this dude on my truck, on my Ford F-150. $13,000 bill that they want to charge me on my truck to repair the motor. They said the motor was blown 13 oh, wow. grand for a replacement on my motor. Yeah, it's a high performance motor, yeah. but it's, it's, that was shocking to me. The truck's only got 65,000 miles on it. I'm like shocked. So even if stuff's going on in your mind. It's and a Ford. Your, what are you thinking, bro? It's a Ford. I know. I should have bought a freaking Chevy, dude. What, what was thinking, I thinking? Bro? It's not shocking at all. It's not shocking. <laughs> Found on road dead. Fix or repair daily. Ford. No, but, it, uh, you know, even when stuff goes, I'm being, I'll be candid. That actually is not my own. My, that's not my truck. That's my wife's truck. Just okay. <laughs> my choice was Chevy. She chose the Ford. It broke down. All right. Well, let's just, but no, but, but seriously, when you're looking at, Hey, what's going on in my life versus what do I need to do in my business? This is always the first thing to go. Prospecting is always the first thing that you kick to the curb. When it, what's funny is that 90% of your problems financially and sometimes emotionally and mentally will go away with prospecting. And what I mean by that is financially they'll go away because you're making money by setting appointments and attending mm -hmm. appointments emotionally because now you're getting out of your head and you're talking to people and you're, you're coming to them with, how can I serve you? How can I help your life? How can I make it better for you? How can I put another couple hundred grand in your, in your bank account? Yeah. That's so you go to with a servant's heart and then now your entire day is switched. I mean, how awesome is it that if you can go into a day feeling like crap, dude, I got a $13,000 bill, but I get to go serve some people today. So I'm going to make those calls. Nope. I'm going to connect with people, get my brain where I need it. Okay. Yep. What'd you got? Well, you got seven minutes and uh, yeah, seven minutes and uh, Daniel, I'm sorry. You're not getting a, a, a chance to spin the wheel. Uh, Daniel's <laughs> actually here in studio. Uh, he's actually the one who spins the wheel. So uh, <laughs> are we not spinning it? Uh, no, but we have seven minutes. So I think we try to get another appointment. Okay. Let's do um, it. Just Let me before just, we go real quick. I need to write down the rest of his info. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions that's online or otherwise? we can answer while I'm writing this in here real quick. All right. Let's uh, get started when you are ready. Yeah, if you guys have questions, write them down there just while I'm, I'm just putting in some info here. Okay, cool. I think I got everything I need to look that one back up. All 
Right. Okay. It's got one more piece of paper. Let's put another appointment on it, baby. Let's do it. Let's go. I need to know everything. Who in the Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche. There's five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. Now, they ain't go harder than me. They need a blade in the sheath, a shank in a piece, a crate full of heat, an army of fleet, a tank in a jeep, a navy at sea, where they some marine, an ace up their sleeve. Call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Eight zero one six five one two. I gotta look over all of my publishing statements for Q1 as soon as the song's done. I gotta call it. Reach Rock Please leave your name and number. I gotta read all my trade publications and sit my teeth in the Hi, you have reached Angie Greenberg with Space and Recreation. I'm unable to take your phone call. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, there's five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where, I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready for war. Sorry, the person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up. Set that up. The dialer's taking some time, huh? Being connected. Has been forwarded to an automatic I'm going to leave a manual voicemail. Eight, Here's what my voicemail say, one, guys. Six, eight, seven, six, one, one, seven. He's not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hi. Hey, I was calling about uh, you had a home for sale. You did not get your message, either because uh -huh. you were not speaking or because of a bad connection. To disconnect, press one. To record your message, press two. Goodbye. Oh, no. Oh, oh shit. Push. You pressed one. That's all good. <laughs> I'll just put no answer on that one. It wasn't responding, and then I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Resume, baby. Please leave your message for 3852. Come on. We got three minutes. We did it in 12 on the first call. Actually, we answered in like two minutes and then oh, yeah. finished it up by 12. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. It's good to hear the uh, agents are calling. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Like I've had so many agents calling me. Good. Keep on it, feet, folks. Like the competition local here. Keeps me fresh and on it. These are a little bit older leads. Thanks for calling. Leave a voicemail. Like this one was that. September. Thanks. So we're back in like September leads, which is all has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. When you get somebody to answer that hasn't sold and they were selling back in September and they kicked all of the other agents to the curb, you're now the V one, which is cool. Hi, this is Manny. Hi. Hey, I was calling about, um, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here on Elizabeth Street. Do you oh, see? we sold that like months ago. Oh, okay, I was just checking. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Come on, baby. We got one minute. One minute. One minute left. One minute. One let's go, let's go. left. <clears throat> One minute left, then we'll call for it. Belonging to zero one three six nine three. All 
I really want one more. I have one more sheet of paper. Hi, this is Adam Chacon. I'm sorry I couldn't answer your call at this moment. If you could please leave your name. No- Ten seconds left, Elmo. Hey, leave me a message, and I'll call Ten. you back as soon as I can. Nine. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> it's Seven, two. Six, five, four, three, two. It's now two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I le- are those I Je- is that Je- Jeopardy or Will of Fortune or I think that's Will of Fortune. Oh, that's Price is Right. Oh, is it Price? It is Price. I think it's You're Price right. is Right. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Copyright. All right. So we got here. So we got three appointments today, yeah. which is good. It was great. Not w- bad. One's on the phone. Two are in person. Um, I, I would say that some of those were like uniquely difficult. What would you say? I mean, the first one was pretty easy. Yeah, so. I liked them. You know. My favorite was the guy who was a little hostile because he's been bombarded with phone calls this morning from agents for the lot yeah. and how <laughs> you kept him on the phone. He he could have hung up any time during that call. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he stayed on the phone. So uh, I mean, Because I wasn't being you, an man. a-hole back. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. When people, here's the thing. Here, here's the mindset. You ready, guys? This is freaking platinum. If somebody picks up the phone and they're being an a-hole to you, they are in a tremendous amount of pain on some level. So remember that. Like, that's why, that, like, even though he's like, oh, I don't have to sell the house. I don't need it. Dude, there's something else in his life that's bugging him. It might be the fact, he might be having pain because he's tired of agents calling him constantly. Yeah. He might be having pain because he and his wife are in, you know, at odds with each other. He might uh. be having pain because something happened in his family recently or somebody passed away. He might be, ha- so people aren't inherently a-holes. Like, they're they're just a they're just acting like a holes. Yeah. Somebody's not a, not always just going to be an a hole, but they 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 might be acting like an a hole because they've had something happen in their life. So just be cognitive of that and be be compassionate on them for like in that process because life's tough, man. Yeah, you never know what people are going yeah. through. And George says it a lot. He says, uh, "What do you say? Treat somebody he says, like yeah, treat somebody like they're going through the worst time in their life, and most of the time you'll be right." Yeah. yeah. So like. Like 90, I would say easy, 90% of the people that you come across are either going into currently in or coming out of one of the hardest challenges of their life at any given time. So be compassionate on people. Yeah. And you know, that that will help you stay consistent too. So you don't take things so seriously on the phone, you know, when they hang up on you or they're, they're, they're mad at you or they, you know, complain to you or call you names you know, as long as you're compassionate and empathetic, empathetic. Yeah. I I just don't get hurt over it anymore. Yeah. Well, thank so, you so much, Alma. Yeah, we pleasure. are past our time. I know you got to go, and I. <laughs> yep. uh, th- these chairs are not the best for two hours, man. So oh, <laughs> I'm man. telling it you, keeps us motivated. Got to get some done. pillows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, shout out to everybody who who, who watched today. Um, thank you so much uh, for tuning in, and uh, we will see you again next week. Yep. I mean, hopefully Thursday, if not Thursday, Friday's a good day. Probably but. Thursday. Yeah, we'll see how how it plays out. Sometimes. Stuff happens, you know, stuff happens. We got to adjust it to Friday or whatever. But yeah. hey, keep you on your toes. Just yeah. keep, keep watching. Jump on the Everest Coaching site. Jump on my um, Facebook and Insta. It's at Alma Merrill. Um, and uh, let's let's keep in touch, people. And feel free to hit me up with questions or whatever. I love it when I get questions. And sometimes I can respond to them. Most of them. Sometimes I can't. But sometimes late at night, I'm right before bed, and I'm like, I'm gonna answer some questions, and I'll pop on. And yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm here for well, you. Shout out to everybody who came in from our. Oh, there's a uh, Glenna. Glenna, hey, how you doing? We uh, remember you from last time. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for uh, Thanks tuning for in. On again. And uh, thank you everybody who came in over from the Real Estate Mastermind Group. That was pretty cool. We yeah, gotta make sure fun. to stay active in there. Yeah. Uh, get some new people in there to, to add value and help them with their skills. So uh, again, thank you, Alma, so much for thank being you. here. And thanks, thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll see you again next see time. See you guys next time. Yep.